and love those guys. It was awesome. We did a couple shows down in Texas and stuff, and super fun. We had a song called uh, um, Among the Elite. It was my favorite to play, and it was about uh, Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> and much like Vegeta's mother, I will accept all comers. How dare. Why'd you take off your shirt? <laughs> This video is brought to you by Try the World. We'll hear more about them later, but for now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local music and the people that make it, including me and my guests. And my guests today are one-third of a psychedelic funk and rock group that formed last year in 2023, so fairly new band. Um, one of them's been on the channel already, and one of them is a friend of the channel. Uh, with fun song titles like Don't Yeet the Kids, please welcome to the channel, Pull Up Reality. What's up? What's up? I don't know What's why up? I totally blanked on the name. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, cheers. Cheers. Slancha. Mm. Room 6 whiskey. So, by the way, if you want to be like them and be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down in the description or click the Room 6 social media link. That will tell you all the places I'm at online, what I'm up to, ways you can support the channel, yada, yada, yada. While you're down there, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You know, the YouTube stuff. It really does help. It really helps grow the channel, and I thank you. Now then, they brought me a gift. We did, in fact, bring you a gift. Whoops, backwards. <laughs> Ta-da! A magic shirt. Yep. What makes it magic? It glows in the dark. Wow. So, um, why pull up reality? So, <clears throat> um, it actually kind of came from a of a Joe Rogan experience like show kind of thing this dude's making fun of Joe Rogan not hard and, <laughs> and so he's got this alien on um, his show he's doing the podcast and uh, he's like I got this uh, the alien goes I got this stuff called <laughs> and, <laughs> and sorry sound guy <laughs> <laughs> gives it to uh, to the fake Joe and he smokes it and his eyes get really big, and Joe's always saying, hey, Jamie, like, pull this up, whatnot. And uh, so the alien goes, hey, Jamie, pull up reality. Oh, wait, he's too gone. Right. And so uh, just hearing that pull up reality kind of like, we all kind of were like, yo, I, honestly, I think there's something there. <laughs> I honestly thought it was more like, you know, like pu you pull up to the spot or something like that. The, it's that the, as well. It's like that, that as well. <laughs> Double entendre. It means both. So, uh, by the way, stick around. We're going to be seeing them perform a couple songs up in room six including a member who's not here right now, yeah. but will be, Ava on the cajon, on drums. Uh, Ava. Who, who else are we missing? Uh, we got Jay Nice, who yeah. does uh, keys, bass, and drums. Yep, yeah. we got Star Freeman, who's another singer in the band. That's true. We also have, uh, of course, we said Ava, but we have a new person. Um, his name is Blake, and I'm blanking his last name right now. But Blake, he's our newest <laughs> guitarist. Uh, in the band and it's been awesome having him his actual first show too was last week and yeah. it was a headlining show and nice. it was just like his first show ever i was like dude, <laughs> this is what it's a... like every game yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well hey, newbies don't get last names so yeah, yeah. right <laughs> um by the way if you don't know who pull up reality are thank you for watching uh tell them who you are what you do in the band i'm rashawn i'm the bass player uh plus because i play guitar on songs keys on songs sing on songs, rap on songs. We we do whatever is the creative thing. And that's the thing about us. We take this psychedelic funk rock um, very serious. What we do is we blend and the song is not complete if it doesn't have all of these elements in it. You know, it, and, and that's what we do. We want to make fun music that makes people happy. You know what I mean? We want to make uh, hard music that you feel comfortable turning up loud. Yeah. You know, we want to show our uh, musicianship uh, things like that are important to us. So as as a band, I think that's that's pretty much what we are. Nice. Yeah. I uh, I'm Braun Braun solo. Um, I play lead guitar and vocals in the uh, in in the band. <laughs> um, I only play guitar and lead vocals because play multiple guitars. I play multiple guitars. They're switching instruments and I switch guitars. So, um, but I think yeah, the best thing about like when we. Rashawn and I kind of really started this band, and I think the the best thing that we kind of came to with 
kind of creating this genre almost. Yeah. Um, was that he's definitely more of the funk guy. R&B, funk, hip hop. I'm, I'm the rock guy, know. and we very much um, uh, came together with also our favorite psychedelic kind of stuff as well, like funkadelics and whatnot. That's right. Kind of create this nice open sound and whatnot. We got so yeah. many songs in the bank ready to go, but yeah. you know we're just. We're, it's like we both need to like it. You know yeah, what I mean, Josh? Yeah. yeah. Like, well, if we have slightly different musical tastes, when we're making a song together, like, it's important that both of us like it. Yeah, collaborative. Right. Like, and and we, we provide the parameters for it. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. By the way, in the intro, I mentioned that one of them has been on the channel before, one of them's a friend of the channel. This man has played bass for some peop- some of the acts that have been on the channel. That's right. Um, including Scotty Dub. Um, Shoot, I can't remember the name of the, the band. Uh, Nashing. No, no, no. They haven't, been, we on we haven't been on here. Yeah, yeah Nashing, unfortunately, had, they broke apart before we could get them on the channel. True. But uh, anyway, he's he's been on the scene for a minute. This is Braun Solo. He's been on the channel. Uh, Cue the thumbnail. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> and um, so there you go. That's who they are. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome the first time, so I'm glad to be able to come back and, and do um, this all again. By the way. I, I forgot to uh, say, uh, I, I'm having some lovely Room 6 whiskey. This actually is uh, some whiskey that I've reviewed on Room 6. This is Grand Old Par 12. And if you're into, into whiskey, into whiskey reviews, check that out. That's on the channel. Um, I just posted it last Wednesday at time of recording, which is about a month and a half from, you know, when you're seeing this. Mm. Lovely. So, <clears throat> I'm going to ask a question, and I apologize in advance, because this is a question nice. that we all hate to get. As this is my favorite kind of question. <laughs> This is the question we all hate to get as musicians. How would you define your band's musical style? Elevator pitch, go. Psychedelic punk rock. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I said it in the we, intro. That's right. Like, but I, I, I expected much. more. <laughs> well, I think we kind of had to get a couple. Um, actually, before we started doing shows and whatnot, we had like a kind of test trial on some shows. Mm-hmm. We just went to this bar, uh, Rum Runner, and played. And um, we kind of got the vibe of general like idea of our sound from that and everyone was like pretty receptive to like you guys have that funk flair rock kind of solos and then this psychedelicness where you get you know a lot of that weird kind of sounding stuff you know the the effects and whatnot and so i think that's kind of what projected us to kind of go you know what that's honestly i think sums it up pretty yeah well i think it's like the parameters right like talking about is that we we all have to like it right like everybody in the band has to like it with all our different musical tastes you know so you know when it comes to chords we extend the chords we're playing instead of playing g majors this is music nerd stuff but instead of playing a g major we're playing a g major seven a g major nine stuff like that We're, we're expanding it um we're also making sure that that you know braun is turned up braun loves his game (laughs) <laughs> I love to, he loves game. I love and, to shred. You know, it, it gives us a um, an aesthetic kind of. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're playing beautiful melodies in a, in a loud and aggressive kind of way. And I think that's keeping the funk that, going. That's though. it. Keep that keeping the funk. Keeping right. the funk going. That's right. Man. Right on. Um, another kind of general question for you. Now you. You've only been doing this since last year as Pull Up Reality. I know you both have been doing music for a lot longer than that. Correct. Yeah. And I asked you this same question as Braun Solo, but now I'm going to ask you, what's your favorite show memory performing with Pull Up Reality? Oh. And it could be one where things went way off the rails. It could be where things, you checked off rock star wish list things. Yeah. It could be somebody went to jail, whatever. <laughs> I think we have all of those stories. Pull yeah, up. Right. <laughs> let, so so let, far. Pull out that pull out that this one time wow, this story one time. In, in a party. Go. Yeah, that's like... Right. Okay, well, so one thing that we'll do, um, that Rashawn and I and Ava will do, um, is we'll kind of break off for some of our um, other friends and do, like, uh, so, like, Charles King or uh, Snap Murphy will kind of, like, go do, um, like, be the band for them in Ivy. And so one cool thing that I, I enjoyed that we got to do was we got to help open up for Afro Man. We did. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, last month, a couple months ago. <laughs> so, I'd say, you know, that wasn't really a, a necessarily like a pull up reality um, show, though. But it was the band. But it was it was the band. It wasn't the full band, but it was what you saw. Right. Um, and so, um, but I would say probably my favorite one that we did, um, 
I think it's got to be the Rum Runner one, man. Like that one, I just think we had. That was real, it was, real intimate. It was and very it was intimate. We yeah. we kind of brought everything for like yeah. the PA, everything. For we backlined the whole thing yeah. ourselves, and yeah, one of those. Yeah, and so it was just it was more fun just getting to like do that, have people who have known us to play come up and and be like, yeah, what's going yeah. on? What are you doing? You know. This is not so, like anything you've ever done. Yeah. yeah. And so I, it's, it was, I think that was uh, my most memorable. Uh, my most memorable moment okay. is uh, Red Dwarf. Our first time playing first Red, Red Dwarf. Dwarf. A yeah. really and, cool tiki bar yes. with some really great sauce on the top Detroit style pizza. That's right. Their pizzas. And, and um, the beer selections. We were doing a song, uh, the song that we were performing tonight, as a matter of fact, Somnific Amber, Amberville, right? And we must leg. have played this song for 10 minutes. And we just, the song was, was just like ma- four. It was Maggot Leg at that point. Right? It was Maggot Leg. That's <laughs> yeah, right. We didn't even have a good lyric wait, yet. Wait, wait, wait. It was called Maggot Leg? It was <laughs> called Maggot Leg, yeah. I kind of wish you'd left that. <laughs> Go ahead. It's an awesome song. Maggot Leg is the instrumental version of Somnific Amberville. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, we've had Say that much, three it's times. The, it's the he's had too much to drink to sing it, but we're gonna still play. It. But we played it for ten minutes, man. Right. We we all just were in such a zone and locked in as a band. That's like that's one of my favorite memories, and it's on video, you yeah. know. But um, so I, I go back to it, I revisit it, I watch it, man, and just to see everybody just be on point for ten minutes and just um, listening to each other and feeling each other. You know what I mean? Basically and just in the vibe for 10 minutes straight on one song. It was right. awesome. That was pretty dope. Hey, look at that. Oh, Pull up reality. Pull up reality. There we go. Power Which, uh, by the way, um, same person that uh, made our Pull Up Reality logo uh, made my Bronze Solo logo. Um, his name is Riker Page. There we go. Really, really um, you can, really you can uh, find him. You can hit me up or hit the band page up if you want to uh, find out who he is and... and Talk to him about getting a logo of your own if you need. Speaking of which, good segue. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll make sure you check out the social media links that I've got down in the description. Absolutely. You'll find also the timestamps for the uh, song performances upstairs. Um, you will answer that question? Yes. Cool. Um, I lied, by the way. Hey. Off camera, I said I didn't really have any like personal deep dive questions, but I forgot. And I'm looking at my notes going, oh yeah, I did. Because <laughs> you told me who was coming, you fool. Oh, uh, no. Right. So, Rashawn. Yes, sir. Happy early birthday, buddy. Thank you. Oh, there you go. When's your, you. When is the birthday officially? Uh, 22nd of May yeah. uh, is so my birthday. It's in the past, the time you're watching this. Whoa. It's in the future as of now we're, when yeah. we're recording. Behind the scenes of television, baby. Right. <laughs> Can we talk about the Zodiac versus Nashing versus Grey Jedi? Yeah. Like, yeah. I love, I love this <laughs> how, do, how do they compare, like, compare or contrast? I'm an eclectic musician, man. Ooh. I'm an eclectic artist. Yeah, you're right. yeah, you're and right. I, I really... Love doing so many different things. Okay, like uh, you know, I do music by myself as a as a rapper. Um, I haven't been rapping as of late, but I grew up my whole life doing that. You know, I was in rap groups. Um, Grey Jedi is a rap group that I was slash am in. You know what I mean? And uh, we've done some interesting things. Well, you say rap group, wasn't it like just a duo? Kind of. It was. It was foundationally a duo. Um, but notionally, yeah, but <laughs> same as us, kind of almost. right. Actually, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, there are other members that help out. You know what I mean? And uh, eventually, a uh, it became a, at least a three or four person group. Okay, for sure. right on. So, talk to me about the Zodiac, though. Was that your solo project? So, Zodiac is is. I'll start with the name, where the name came from. Thank you. It came from. Uh, I chose this name when I was a teenager. Um, so edgy. <laughs> well, what it is is that. You know, everybody has their zodiac sign, right? A Gemini, a Pisces, right. whatever your sign may be. Um, but when I make music, I try to make music that's for everybody, that's for the whole zodiac, and not just the individual zodiac right. signs. That's zodiac so, with a K, by the way. With a K, with capital K, actually. Mm. Yeah, sir. That's right. Technically, it's capital because all my notes are in capital. <laughs> <laughs> so you did it right. Like yeah, and exactly. bold because I'm old. <laughs> right on. And then Nashing was a little bit more of a. Like reggae world beat type vibe. That's right. That's right. At least for what you were doing with it, and I, I tr- we we tried to get Nashing on the channel so hard, but schedules never lined up, and then they eventually, uh, well, the two front people left. So technically, yeah. technically, Nashing still exists. Uh, we should say that technically yes, it still there. exists, but our um, two lead singers and band leaders. Uh, live in New well, Hampshire. Well, technically, they the live Be- in New Hampshire. Technically, so. the Beatles still exist, but you know, right. uh, <laughs> some of them do. Some of them do. Uh, one like Ringo. 
Is he the only one? Paul. Is Paul? Is oh, Paul's the only one left. Paul. I just saw a TikTok from Sir Paul McCartney. Yeah, Paul. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I thought he would have died first. No, no, no. I, w- I definitely. Yeah. <laughs> According to the conspiracy, yeah, you're right. He, yeah, he got he's replaced with a symbiote. Anyway, yeah. uh, you still stand for Bobby Bumfrey, Humphrey? Bobby Humphrey. Yeah, you, you're that big, is one of my favorite artists, man. I love this question, man. You're an awesome interviewer, man. Um, yeah, Bobby Humphrey, uh, awesome uh, jazz flutist, flautist, flautist. Yes, thank flautist, you. Um, from the uh, <laughs> 70s, know. mostly. Uh, she has some great albums, My Little Girl, Blacks and Blues. Um, and, and so many others. Right. Uh, it's one of my favorite artists, man. I, I really recommend her music, man. That's amazing, man. Thank you for that question. Thank, <laughs> hey, you, thank you for letting me promote no some of my favorite artists because I, I have like what I call individual taste in music. Right. Like, I'm like, ooh, check out this song. And everybody in the room is like, I don't know, bro. Like, yeah. What is that? What are you What are you playing right now? We're going to see know? a flautist added to the Right. Party. You're like, <laughs> check out this flautist. I'm surprised. Like, it doesn't really go over at the party. I'm surprised right? Nashing didn't have one. He had like 10 people in the band, practically. So from, from that icon to uh-huh. Sin City Icons, episode four, mm-hmm. you were both in it. You were briefly in it, like for a second, right? Like a touch and everything. Yeah, but you were actually featured. I think in that it. was your birthday last last time, and you oh, did the. That's you did, right. when we, that was the Rum Runner show. That's yes, right. right. And I wanted to talk. Hey, John. Did, who, shout out to whoever did the episode. Yeah, that was Ross. I John think? Ross. Yes. John Ross. But I really felt like they didn't focus on the band enough. But that's it, you're, it's a, a Sin City icons plural. I get it. Um, talk to me about that process. Have you know being in the field in the the, the industry. What was it like? Was it like they just kind of said, hey, meet us here and, and do this? Was it at Rum Runners that they talked to you? It was the same show that Brian was talking about earlier tonight when you asked him his favorite moment. It was that exact same, exact same show. one. Awesome. And what it was, it was my birthday party. Oh, yeah. It was my birthday party and uh, a lot of my friends came. And because I came up through um, all of these different genres, like you were asking me earlier, like with Nashin and all my reggae friends and, and I was a rapper my whole life, all my hip hop friends and all my rock friends and, and everybody was there. All my R&B friends were all there celebrating my birthday. And, uh, John has, he was my friend, right? And so he was coming to celebrate, but also he has a, a TV show, a web uh-huh. show. And so he filmed footage and I, I suggest you check out that show. Uh, I gave him some really Wise, drunken words of wisdom yeah. that night. Yeah, Very drunken, because I think we were done playing. It was right? a lot, bro. It was a lot. We had, it was like, so many shots on stage. Yeah. This is why I generally don't interview at the show. Yeah. <laughs> that being Makes said, sense. I do have a mobile interview coming up here this month. Uh, I can't remember where, <laughs> but uh, it's on my calendar. And so, you know, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing so you get notified. Because my, my mobile interviews... Ring that bell. My mobile interviews generally subscribe. are always just a... a Crap, like I don't know what I'm getting into right. in terms of the space and what sort of sound issues I'm dealing with and all this stuff. But they're they're always fun because there's this air of we gotta get it done, we gotta get it done. <laughs> you know, they're sound checking. <laughs> yes, and it's a metal show. We gotta get the- <laughs> really gotta get the sound checked on a metal show. Yeah, right. I know. So, Braun. Yeah. Can we talk about Brutalis? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> shout out Brutalis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was uh, a death metal band, yes, deathcore band that I was in. Uh, I actually, when I started playing guitar, played a lot more metal. Um, probably oh. never would have touched a lot of the music nowadays that I did. I do um, at that age yeah. when I started, but uh, Brutalis was like, I believe that was the, like the last metal band I was in. Before I started doing like my acoustic project and doing parking meter and then bronze solo and eventually like doing all this, um, and love those guys. It was awesome. We did a couple shows down in Texas and stuff, and super fun. We had a song called uh, um, "Among the Elite." It was my favorite to play, and it was about uh, Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> and much like Vegeta's mother, I will accept all comers. How dare! Why'd you take off your shirt? <laughs> okay, so um, definitely some killer riffs. Um, I'm they're no longer we're no longer there's no longer a band of Brutalis, but um, uh, I still know a lot of the guys there. Uh, Casey, my brother, who played uh, guitar and stuff with us in that band. It, you know, I, I I loved that band. It was cool. It was definitely a lot of fun getting to do. That was probably like the height of my uh, going out and doing like kind of mini tours and stuff like that. So. You know what I just realized? When you said Vegeta, mm-hmm. 
I immediately realized we're all basically wearing the same glasses. That's right. <laughs> the three of right. us look like such nerds. Walmart special. <laughs> right. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No. But I just thought it was funny. It was just like... That is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely you, correct. You didn't even look, notice oh, everything. my God. <laughs> I've never noticed that before, but you're right. I, I, I stand for Krillin. Anyway. <laughs> Somebody so, asked you. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he, I don't know. In some ways, I think he won the wife lottery. But anyway... Oh. Yeah. And, and can we say, like, he doesn't get bogged down in episodes long fights? No. In fact, he just grows hair at one point, which I. That was. I didn't like that. Yeah. That was. <laughs> anyway, we, I digress. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, moving on. Yeah. Okay. Which is your favorite swim stroke <laughs> from Stillwater <laughs> High swim team? Man, wow. so you weren't going to deep dive the, into this. Wow. Like, so, okay. The butterfly or the backstroke? Okay, so Stillwater where? Stillwater, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Yeah. Um and uh K L A H O M A Oklahoma. Okay. Um yeah, so at all of high school I did swimming. Um I was very proficient in the butterfly. Um I think backstroke was probably more of my stronger stroke to do. Right. But I did absolutely enjoy doing butterfly just cuz it was like kind of the the tougher stroke to get down yeah and my coach just was like Dude, oh butterfly like, sucks it. every time yeah no, it, it just sucks eventually <laughs> you're like dragging your arms up on the yeah. water like I mean, you I, have to be completely you feel like, it, uh, like somebody had a it was a, like a twisted love child of an albatross and a dolphin <laughs> <laughs> you're like, come on <laughs> oh, that's not pretty no but the back the backstroke you can settle in and yeah it kind of gets long, the, yeah just until the water until around. you eventually get water in your mouth the, the worst part is having to, uh, so they put these flags above the pool, mm -hmm. and that's like your indicator when you're doing backstroke to be like, okay, I don't bust your head on the wall. And so then you get the like one turnover stroke, and you have to flip and then yep. come back. And so, yeah, um, make sure you pay attention to those flags, because I... I was going to say, it never occurred to me that that's what they were for. That's exactly what they're for. It totally makes sense. It it's all makes so sense. you know. Sorry. Not just an expert at guitar, <laughs> also an expert at swimming. All right, Apparently. I got, I got, I got one more for you. I got one more for you. Ready? Okay. And then we're gonna take a quick little break. Ready? All right, okay. all right. Were you involved at all with the Eskimo Joe's controversy? What the controversy? Yeah, oh. there was a whole brouhaha about oh their about logo the name. And the name. Oh, yeah. Okay, basically they were the Washington Redskins before the Washington Redskins. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So the Indy Washington Redskins. The Oklahoma, uh, the Oklahoma yeah. version. Well, it was a coffee place. No, it's a it's a bar. It started out as oh, a bar. I thought it was a coffee place. No, um, that was the Gypsy Cafe that I worked at. I don't know why. Um, All equally problematic, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I, something about the logo or, or something. So, so the, Oklahoma is a wild place. So place. the logo <laughs> is a Eskimo and his dog. And, and the big smile. The big smile. It's really my low, I'm not gonna low go, key, mildly offensive. So in Oklahoma, you do get snow, but like you know. There's a reason why they're smiling that hard. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> um, I did not... Are you talking about meth? No. <laughs> this guy. No. No, I'm not. Um, so, I, I did I did hear a bit. I was uh, out of Oklahoma at the time when this whole like controversy for it happened. Um, some people were, I think, just kind of... I feel like people were just kind of jumping on the bandwagon of like, let's find any yeah. and everything to like nitpick and, and be like, man, we're mad about it. Um Eventually, what happened to come out was a lot of people were just like, you know what, like, it's not about, because um, I hear that, you know, Eskimo is like basically a racial slur to... It kind of is, know, yeah. And, yeah. And I think because it's not meant in a way to harm them and, you know, I don't know, the iconic... So, one thing about Eskimo Joe's is they're the most... The second most desirable T-shirt in the world. So it's Hard Rock Cafe and then Eskimo Joe's T-shirt. Really? Yes. Like who is 100%. counting T-shirts? This Dude, is amazing. Dude, like it's, it's somebody is counting. And it all started because like uh, when they were the just world. a bar Wednesdays, <laughs> if you wore your Eskimo Joe shirt, you'd get free beer. Well, no and, wonder. <laughs> so that's kind uh, of what one, launched them. The and they, they, you know, they make shirts for everything: Ooh. Teachers' Day, Valentine's Day, any little holiday you can think of. This making reminds a shirt me of a certain sandwich chain that we both know and love: Chiba. Yeah. Love Chiba Hut. Well, really. Where's Chiba Hut's special? Like, wear a shirt, you get something. I know, like right? Like a free like, hash can or if something. If they still had Flip the Bird uh, Pale mm -hmm. Ale, yeah, right. if you wore a Chiba shirt or something, tell Shout me. out Chiba Hut. Get Flip the Bird. I guess that place the is the reason why this band exists, huh? I wouldn't what? be surprised. I 
Dean Nashing at Chiba Hut. That's right. Okay. I yeah. put on my first ever Room 6 showcase at Chiba Hut. Our yeah. first time playing together was at Chiba That's Hut. That's right. Yep. I didn't even think of that. Before we before were we, band, yeah. when we were put together. <laughs> yep. I don't even um, think we had played yet before. Well, I didn't even know you, yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm walking up on stage like, what's up, man? I'm, um, I'm like, yeah, we, we were hired. We were both hired to play in a band together. Nice. That's for the, uh, and then we uh, ended up in a band together. That's for the Ivy Scotty Dub EP Phone Home. EP Phone Home, that's right. Chance to check that out. I remember watching the, them perform at Chiba Hut. Oh, yeah. yeah? Yes. So with all that, you were done, right, with the Eskimo Joe thing? I didn't night. have anything to say about it. So. I I didn't do anything. <laughs> right on. I didn't. I didn't. I personally, you know, felt no difference about it. You hear that? Time for a refill. That that's is... the sound. That's the sound <laughs> of an impending booze break. We're gonna hear a quick message from future Josh. Uh, and uh, yeah, booze break. Booze break. Cheers to y'all. And now a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. As some of you know, I enjoy the occasional whiskey on this channel. Tasting and reviewing whiskeys makes me feel so. Gourmet. And that goes for trying out food from other countries, too. Sometimes I wish I could take a tasting trip around the world. Fortunately, there's Try the World. Try the World is the first gourmet tour around the world, but with no plane ticket needed. Just go to tritheworld.com and subscribe to receive a gourmet box from a different country like France, Japan, or Brazil every month. Discover a dozen of the best gourmet and cultural finds in each box, accompanied by beautifully illustrated culture guides explaining how to enjoy the food. Their site offers gift boxes, the premium signature boxes, and the very affordable snack boxes. I'm all about the snack box because you get five different snacks from five different countries every month. Normally, snack box subscriptions are 19 bucks a box, but you do get a discount for an annual commitment. That's a price even musicians can afford. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get $10 off your snack box order by entering the coupon code SNACKBOX10 at checkout. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Try the World for being a sponsor, and let's get back to today's show. We're back! Got some more Room 6 whiskey here. And for those of you, uh, it's an old joke, but for those of you just joining us, what are you doing jumping in the middle of a video? We're with Pull Up Reality. Boom, they brought me a shirt. It glows in the dark. And we have a couple more questions, and then we're going to see them perform with Ava, their drummer, up in room six. So stick around for that. Gentlemen. Yes. What's new on the horizon here in June and forward for Pull Up Reality? So, so far right now, um, uh, so far right now, we have... <laughs> I'm busy. Uh, we're, we're, we're working on um, getting a lot of um, solidity and like things that we kind of... Uh, want to make sure like happen when we go and play um wanna, you know kind of have we're writing up a contract right and you know getting our getting our press kit contracts right writers yeah. all of that you know like stuff. we're getting we're getting a lot of the foundation that um you kind of forget i guess when you <coughs> start first playing and we've done Rashawn and i have played so many shows even all the rest of our band have done a lot of shows yeah. and you know we don't do this for free no more okay right. so um we're right now we're really working on getting um the some of these songs out um i'm hoping that by this time we'll have some um songs up for everyone to enjoy right now we do have don't eat the kids on all of your music streaming Yeet. um stuff right. but don't do that don't 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 eat, don't eat your kids yeah that's not cool <laughs> um but so we got a lot planned um hopefully um if you follow us on our instagram or facebook which would just be pull up reality <laughs> um you will be notified of every show anything that we have going on um in the future so right yeah we have um we have a lot of songs recorded already uh that will be getting released uh we have songs that we still need to record that will probably be singles we've got like um, three albums done right now uh two two yeah well, two then why haven't you been releasing them because oh, they're coming you know we're not trying to print it you know we don't want to like here's the next album next album next That's album right. next album That's we're right. trying to like you know yeah do a nice vibe of here's one album no, I get it. I get it. Vibe it out, you know, like let it go for a bit, yeah. and then get so, the next one. But having the next album ready to rip, and which we're hoping, because the first album was very much with Sean and I just um, making stuff together. It was the two of us. It was just the like, two of literally. us to start. Like then we picked so up. So we're Gabe playing all the nice. instruments. Yeah. We're doing all the tracks. So we're hoping with this you new know. second album, we can get the like co-op of everybody that's that we've accumulated yeah. for the band of Pull Up Reality. So getting Jay Nice on some, you know licks and you know stuff like that getting everybody incorporated into the band now versus just 
kind of this first album being Rashawn and I, you know, hitting the, like, we were week after week just trying to knock out another song, knock yeah. out another song, so. Yeah. Uh, Don't Eat the Kids, Don't Eat the Kids being one of those. That was like uh, our first song we made completely, nobody having a riff, yeah, like, yeah. set aside or anything. Yeah, so a, lo- a lot of songs, um, because we're both song- songwriters, um, sometimes I'll come with a song. Uh-huh. And I'll, or I'll come with the idea or a riff or come with the whole entire song and then we'll perform it. Same with Braun. He'll come with a whole song or he'll come with a riff. But this is the one where we sat there. Uh, probably Stella was the first. Um, but Yeet the Kids was like the best probably. Was, so that was our better. Right. Our better one. Right. And um, we just came in there with nothing. And we Set truly collaborated. Yeah. We truly, you know... Both played instruments at the same time. We we wrote it together. We critiqued each other's uh, instru- instruments and things. You know what I mean? Like, just to get it to be the right. Imagine me always, like, shredding fast yeah. and having to have Rashawn go. Hey, buddy. Slow it down. Like, Chill, so pretend, you pretend your guitar is singing. Sing like. with the guitar. <laughs> yeah. So what you're That's saying exactly is what I'm you, saying. Exactly. you both played producer and studio engineer. He's definitely doing more of the on the computer yeah. stuff, and I'm just yeah. kind of sitting there drinking and, so and being me, like, "What about this?" Let me ask, <laughs> let me ask you this. Thing. <laughs> so, with all that in mind, let me ask you this: What's your green M M&M, and M like sneaking it in the right or see how much they pay attention? Question or, or uh, you know, demand? Oh, for like our contract, we want yeah. To so one of the big things that I would you, like to see you see kids, <laughs> you see kids. There was there's this. It's not even an urban myth. What band was it that did it? What the green M M&M and M thing? There was Van some, Halen or somebody. Yeah. It was like Van Halen, one yeah. of the big big bands. They would yeah. include on their rider which new musician? Led Zeppelin. It was Led Zeppelin. Yes, they had right. a list of everything that they wanted, and they had one particular um, uh, thing, which was no only, green or like only green. Only M&Ms. green M and M's. And when in they the, walked into the the green room, if they saw a yeah. bowl of green M and M's, they knew right then that everything else that they That's had right. requested was yep. was fulfilled. Which if is you're gonna the, do something as lesson. stupid as picking out yeah. all the green M and M's, pr- probably three bags. Did you see the ad? Uh, I forget what what the product was. Um, oh, hey, there's the sound guy. Hi, sound guy. Hi, sound guy. Hi, sound guy. <laughs> so. Uh, did Unless he walks in with a drink. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers to you. That's a room six sound guy. So, um, did you see the ad? I forget what product it was for, what what service or whatever, but it was like some uh uh some like like venue gopher mm-hmm. sees who's playing is like, oh crap, and he runs and he gets like all the black you can possibly fit in a dressing room, black roses, black this, black that. And Alice Cooper walks in, he's like, Cool. Well, what's with all the black? <laughs> like, that wasn't a writer's situation. He That's just right. assumed. He just, yeah. But right. um, yeah. So do you have one yet? You should probably think about that. See, because sneaking in some stupid requests on a writer, like they, like Braun said, is the way to make sure that everything's going to be fine. That's right. Yeah. You get that one tedious thing mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. down that that you know it's going to take them the longest to do that one little stupid thing that really truly probably doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, one you're, dirty you're, mirror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any one mirror, just nothing. No but, clean like, mirrors yeah. in our dressing room. <laughs> God, I need the top light bulb of my mirror actually off. Get yeah, one. Yeah, light, there one you go. Out, like, we want one light bulb. One off. light bulb. I need light. mine patterned yeah. though. Off on, off on, off on. Oh, you're just a dick. <laughs> I'm just a dick. That's, well, he's that's he's making produ- sure that they follow the rest <laughs> of the ride. That's production hell, right? <laughs> <laughs> but hey, at least I'll know every other request that was big that's right. is done. Is done so. Like I said, stick around. We got one more question for you. You made it. Last question. Yay. Cheers. 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 And stick around. We're going to see a couple songs upstairs with Ava, their drummer, in room six. Uh, the sound guy's cheersing. Hey. 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 <laughs> Shout out to David and uh, and Chloe there, his, uh, his assistant. We got one more question. You made it. Last question. Yay. So stick around. We're going to see them upstairs with Ava, their drummer, performing a couple songs. But first, you OG room sixers know what's coming. I asked this of all my prey. You've been asked this before. Do you remember? No, I don't. Do you remember? I don't remember. <laughs> so, we're going to circle back to that earliest musical. I never asked that. Oh my gosh, we've been having such a good time. I choked the shark and left, missed my notes altogether. I normally ask, what's your earliest musical influence? What was that first moment? You said, I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I apologize. We missed that. But let's say we're going back to you, okay? Remember this question now? Yeah, now. Yes. 
We're going to jump in the time machine. We're going to go talk to little you. And what is one thing that you wish somebody had said, hey, you're going to need to know this. And don't say change your strings. <laughs> So my first a- answer is off the table already. So let's see. <laughs> um, <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> no. Um, to understand how the business works, right? Mm-hmm. To to understand contracts, writers, dealing with venues, to understand knowing your worth and your value as a band. Right. Um, uh, uh, also included in that to me is um, knowing how to make professional content, that is mix and mastered uh, the right way. Um, the the professionalism. I've always been gung ho on arti- artism, right? Art- artism. Art- artism. I've made that, that word up. That is an album name. I've made that word up. One. Twenty 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 five. That's right. <laughs> Pat, Pat, pending. Um, pending. Yeah. Nobody could take it. Copyright. Yeah. But you know, it's music business, and I've always been big on the music and. You know, it's only in later years that I've been learning the business. So I would have loved to know that earlier. Yeah. On. Get the music business part out of the way early, and you'll you'll have so much more fun making the music because you know I got paid, or, or you know I'm 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 taking care of every, everybody in the band every time. Getting paid every time. is very fun. Yeah, and at least with the contract, like you will have a way for them to tell you mm-hmm. right off the bat uh, when you're getting paid. Yep. Right. So you get all your green M and M's and everything. Exactly. That's right. So. Mr. Solo. All right. So, um, to kind of, I guess, like from the beginning, which was uh, what started me on guitar, I believe I even answered this last time like this. Jonathan Payne was like the first mm-hmm. like guy that I saw playing guitar in a, a black metal band called, uh, or death metal, tra- thrash metal? Whatever they are, Pick the Black Dolly Murder. The, kind of genre. Genre. the Black Dolly Murder and John Companion was like the reason I picked up guitar at all. And um, I didn't even like really go for solos first. It's kind of like rhythm, but I really liked like heavy metal at that point. Um, so he was very much my inspiration of like getting up into that and then started well, learning things like Steve Vai and Joe Satriani and stuff. But what would you tell little you? So you what I would tell um, little me. Sorry. Man, no, yeah, I, was, I, was rapping, I was rapping back. You were answering the question. I didn't answer. Fair yeah. enough. Or fair didn't enough. ask him. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Room 6 Whiskey. Anyway, go ahead. What would you tell Thank little you? Thank you, Room 6. Um, first and foremost, I would I would probably say, like, like, learn everything about, you know, this business. Definitely, like, practice. Learn what you can as far as, like, the ins and outs, basically what he was saying. Like, like it took us, it took me until this band, Port Reality, to actually start doing the kind of running things aspect of having to do like making contracts or like getting at shows and stuff. I, when all my other bands that I've been in, I've always just been like, oh, I'll show up, play guitar, and then get off stage. You know, like I, I never once tried to get us a show. I never once tried to. What are you, a bass player? Ah. More like a vocalist. I'm so offended. Okay. Five minutes before the show starts. All right, what's first? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, Sorry. And so, so you that's know, so, I would... that's stereotypical. That's stereotypical. <laughs> I sang for My seven. Kind. I sang for seven years. What, bassist? <laughs> yeah, the bassist. Guy. I sang for seven years in a cover band playing four-hour shows, and the name of the band was Revolving Door, and it was the best name I ever came up with. And the bassist was always, "Who do we got this time?" Cool. Okay. What, well, what time is it? What time is it now? Cool. What time is it? Is it? That's, yeah, a rough yeah, one. Yeah. I'm that's a rough one. I'm sorry. I digress. We're talking to Little Braun. Go ahead. <laughs> so, Little Braun. Teach the children's. Little Braun rhythm. Because you didn't solo yet. Um, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Soloing is uh, just being bored with fingers. Go ahead. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, definitely, like, take the time to uh, go ahead and learn those aspects of, you know, Doing the doing the band stuff, you know, it's very important actually, and it's it's actually the most important. It really right? is, and now that I'm older, yeah. like that's probably the biggest thing I wish that you know, you know why it's the most important. Team, you know, everybody, uh, family out there that's watching, there are bands that you hate and you think they are not talented at all, but their business is right and they're making millions of dollars. And that's them. why you know them, yeah, because their business. Yeah, is we right. all have those songs that. <clears throat> they're in our head and we can't get rid of right. them because they're catchy and they're popular even though we hate mm-hmm. them that's the business that's the business yeah but you gotta put in that work even as a musician and that means either making sure you got a guy that does that or if you're gonna take on the or girl. yourself guy girl 
I mean, yeah. I do. I do. Person. Do universal don't person. come in here a person, and freaking assume gender's on my channel. A person. <laughs> a person. Got uh, hippie. <laughs> hey, we go ahead. And, don't uh, assume uh, species either, bro. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be back here. <laughs> you go ahead and finish. Hey, 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 get your ass back here. All right. Um, <laughs> No, so, um, you know, it's, it's understanding that when you have a band, it is, definitely it is definitely much more than just showing up and doing practice, showing up and making songs, showing up and learning songs. It is definitely more, there is way more to it. And there's the music, biggest thing I would say is, is to 18-year-old me, like, dude, like, learn every aspect, every inch of your hobby. Mm-hmm. Because then you can actually project it into a career. A career. And, and having that knowledge at 18 would have definitely been better than 33. Literally a half hour a day will change your world. Whether it's studying for something or learning something new. Take the half hour and consider it improving yourself. That's right. Yeah. Whether it's a, you know hitting the gym or learning about... Uh, record label contracts or yeah, ten thousand hours is yeah. what they say, right? 10, yeah, hours. you can do it a half hour at a time. That's right. It really is not that hard if you're like one episode of My Little Pony. <laughs> That's where's all the where's all my bronies out there? Brony for life. <laughs> Blake, anyway. shook out. My name's in the. My name's in the. Damn it! Yeah. We, we do wear the same glasses. <laughs> <laughs> with that, I want to thank you for hanging in there with us and for watching. Stick around, we're going to see them perform upstairs. Thank you for being on the channel, gentlemen. Thank you again. Oh, thank you for having us. Clink and each other. Thank there you. we go. Drink, drink. Mm. And we will see you after the performance in the outro. So, temporarily say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, temporarily. temporarily goodbye. See you, in a, see you in a little bit. We'll pull up reality, and this song is called Somnific Amber Veil. Got me captivated, completely mesmerized. I just cannot take it when you look at me with those eyes. I feel the fire burning me up inside. Your lips of kerosene, fuel for my engine ignite. Somnific amber veil. Cascades your golden gaze Blue night sky glisten Full moon comes to fit Your body's aching, girl I can see you want it back Dress descending, delicate deltoids That's when the loving begins your golden gaze blue night sky glisten
full moon comes to fit Your body's aching, girl I can see you want it bad Dress descending, delicate delta And that's when the loving begins Pull up reality. This song is called Pepe Le Pur. Smell so good, so fresh. Black coat, pinstripe, look at my best. Hat cocked, to no good. Just an angel with the devil's look. Can't stop, got no way to contain me. Living on top, cause my style so stag yeah.
Bank Pull Up Reality for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and an awesome performance. If you want to know more about them, hit those links down in the description. And if you want to see more videos like this, click up there. If you want to subscribe, you know what to do. Click over there and don't forget to ring the bell. And if you want to hear my own music, right on the other side of that guy's head. Click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys. Shout out Patrick Usual. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba. Squee! It's always one.